Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, interesting video today. We're going to react to a presentation of Dr. Shabir Ali with the title Was Paul Actually a False Prophet? You already know my take on the so called Saint Paul, the so called Apostle of Christ that never met Jesus Christ. However, I'm very excited to hear what Dr. Shabir Ali has to say on the subject. With no further ado, let's have a look. Now, to go further, I want to return to my history uh, uh, question. I have here a book entitled Saint Peter, the Underestimated Apostle by Martin Hengel. Martin Hengel, as you know, is widely recognized as a conservative scholar. And uh, Martin Hengel uh, now recognizes that there has been a split in the early church. There's been a, a, a division between Paul on the one hand and Peter on the other hand. Absolutely. This division is actually explained in more detail in a book uh, by, entitled The Evidence for Jesus by James Dunn. What uh, these scholars are showing is that uh, two streams uh, of uh, teaching went out in the early church. My, my video is back up, but now I'll just go without it. Two streams of teaching. On the one hand, there is Paul, and hence we find uh, in the New Testament uh, statements about uh, uh, Paul saying, for example, that uh, God came down humbled himself, became Jesus. Philippians uh, chapter 2, the Carmen Christi that... Uh Think about it logically. If God is one, the one, the absolute existence, the absolute reality, and every single existence of ours is contingent upon him, he is the only true reality. He is the only true existence. Why would he need then to humble himself? With this knowledge of knowing that he is all-powerful, that there are absolutely no competitors for him, nobody can compete with God. He is the beginning and the end. Why would such a God need to humble him? Philippians uh, chapter Makes 2, no the sense Carmen Christi whatsoever. that uh, uh, Nabil spoke about. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse number 6. Uh, Paul takes the Shema Israel and he makes uh, two persons out of that one. In the Shema Israel, there was only one Lord God. Right. And now Paul makes it... Here, O Israel, your God is one. One Lord and one God. One Lord Jesus, one God the Father. He splits right. them. Right. So, uh, we know Duality. the Hadron Collider has split the atom recently. Now, Paul did a splitting way back when. Mm. Uh, but Paul is representing one particular view here. And the view of Peter and er other early disciples of Jesus did not survive to be written for us in the New Testament. We do have two documents that are named 1 Peter and 2 Peter, uh, apparently letters of Peter, written in Peter's name, actually. But according to Martin Hengel, these are pseudonymous uh, works which means that somebody else wrote them using Peter's name. Why would they want to do that? Well, one reason is that if you look at 2 Peter, you will see that 2 Peter praises Paul and speaks of him as brother Paul and speaks about his letters as if these are scriptures on par with the scriptures of God. Yes, absolutely. And this is why he is called Apostle Paul. I mean, think about this word play here. Every apostle that was alive during Jesus' time was an apostle because he was alive during Jesus' time. Paul, however, was not an apostle. He never saw Jesus. He allegedly had a vision. How would we confirm this? Why would we take his word now over Jesus's? What these scholars are saying is that somebody who is a follower of Paul, wanting to show Paul in a good light, and wanting to show that Peter accepted Paul, wrote this in order to promote Paul. When what? we read Acts of the Apostles, which is a sort of history book in the Christian New Testament, we get the idea that there is a, a, a rapprochement between the various sides. Ah, Paul on the, other hand, on the one hand, James now on the other hand. Uh, Peter has now gone off somewhere else. Why has he gone off somewhere else and we're not even told where? According to Martin Hengel, this is uh, Luke's way of... Uh, 
uh, bringing people on stage, taking them off stage. That's why we have the pageants, uh, uh, you know, based on Luke's gospel at Christmas time, right? Luke is good at that, bringing people, taking them off stage. So Peter just goes off elsewhere. We don't know where in, in, in the Acts of the Apostles. We have to find that information elsewhere. And then James becomes the leader of the church. Who is James? It's mentioned as the Lord's brother. Yep. Uh, James now is shown to be the brother of Jesus. Yep. Allegedly. Paul comes to Jerusalem. When he comes to Jerusalem, James puts him to the test. Are you still following the Jewish laws? And to pass the test, Paul pays for the sacrifices of those who had entered into a vow. And he himself goes into that sacrificial routine. Now, th these, uh, this is a couple of decades after Jesus has already said to be died on the cross. And Christians think, Jesus died on the cross, that means a new uh, dispensation has been entered. Now we do no longer follow the law. And yep. Paul himself in his writings seemed to be saying we don't need to follow the law anymore. We have a new dispensation. But he comes to Jerusalem and what is he doing? Following the law, right up to the extent of performing the sacrifices, which we are told that the one sacrifice of Jesus did away with forever. Now That's what's happening point. here? Luke Never is reconciling and showing us that they are in agreement. But according to Black's New Testament uh, commentaries, uh, it seems hypocritical for Paul to behave in this way. So either he didn't behave in this way, and Luke is just making it such, or perhaps he is all things to all men, as he said himself, in order to win them uh, to Christ. But when we look at this, we see that there was a division, and the early Christian apostles who followed Jesus, their message did not survive. Their group survived as a group called Ebionites, named after Matthew's uh, statement, apparently, where, where Jesus says, blessed are the poor. So they were called the Ebionites, the poor ones. Yes. But their movement the died out Christians. within the first uh, few centuries of Christianity. What did they believe? Mm -hmm. They believed not in a triune God, but they believed that Jesus was uh, a prophet and a messenger of God. They believed in only one God, as Muslims today believe. This was the earliest belief. Don yeah. Cupid, uh, in his book, uh, Jesus and the Gospel of God, regrets the fact that uh, the Reformation uh, only questioned papal authority, but did not go back as far as to question Paul's authority. We need to ask, who made Paul really a disciple of Jesus? Did he really see Jesus on the road to Damascus? Uh, or did he a see vision, something else? Didn't he dream. himself say in his Corinth yeah. Corinthian correspondence that even the um, devil appears as an angel of light to deceive many? Exactly uh, so right. And this is something that my Orthodox brothers back in the day used to tell me over and over again. I talked about this prior. Yes, I had spiritual experiences. I had psychedelic experiences. During those experiences, I witnessed certain beings of light that came with a message of love. However, within the Orthodox Church, this would get discarded right away. They cannot be angels because even Lucifer, Satan, deceives the people and makes himself appear like an angel of of light. Your visions are invalid. Done deal. However, when it comes down to Paul the Apostle, he had a certain vision where Jesus told him, apparently, allegedly, he can eat what he wants now and the law is abolished. This is way, way after Jesus. Now, we are not going to think about him being deceived. Of course not. He was on the right track. Now we can eat pork. And, and why did the original disciples of Jesus uh, have a different view with Paul? And why was there this split between uh, Paul and, and Peter, as acknowledged by Martin Hengel. And it's not enough to dismiss the scholars, the scholars by saying Gregory Boyd is an open theist, Martin Hengel is dead now, so he must know that the Trinity is true. No, you have to look at the scholarship of these scholars. These are great scholars who have written their books, and yes, you can refute their books. They're, they're not infallible, they're not God, but at the same time, they are scholars, and they're given their reasons. Like Gregory Boyd has given his reasons. He has shown that Echad and Elohim are actually used of other individuals who are not God, and, and they're singular and yet these plural terms are used. So you cannot say because the plural term is used of God, that means that this uh, is, is actually a, a, a multiplicity within the one God. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Absolutely beautiful presentation by Dr. Shabir Ali. Here, I have to say that he came up with very strong points, yet again refuting the so-called apostleship of the so-called, yet again, Saint Paul. 
there is such a big discrepancy if you look into the narrations of Paul. But moreover, if you simply use common sense, it does not add up. If you look at the life of Jesus, during his time, he had a bunch of apostles. During the time of Jesus, he was a law-abiding Jew. None of those apostles ate pork. None of those apostles ever thought that it would have been a good idea to abolish the law. Quite the opposite. If we talk about the Ebonites, what has happened after Jesus' ascension, or Jesus' death, no matter what you think, those Ebonites, those early apostles, still were within the temples and still participated in the Jewish life. So there you can see that they most definitely didn't become Christians of the modern day and age, where they're eating pork, drinking alcohol, and what not. So then when you look at Paul, conveniently, Paul worked for the Roman Empire. Moreover, Paul was persecuting Christians. He was killing Christians. But on the way, to persecute more Christians, out of a sudden he has a vision, of course, that turns him to Christ. However, now he comes with a new message of the abolishing of the law. This is not Christ's message whatsoever. But he proclaims himself as an apostle and now follow me. Conveniently, yet again, after that, Christianity becomes Rome's state religion. Yes, after Paul spreads his version of Christianity, Christianity gets adapted by the Gentiles and like that enforced by the Roman Empire. Mission accomplished. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. Nothing new here, but nevertheless, really, really important to stress who this Paul was. This is it for today's video, guys. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel by a patron, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.